Welcome to an introduction to the determinant. The determinant is a new invariant of links that we haven't seen so far. Um, it's closely related to colouring, but it's a bit nicer uh, because it just gives you a number. For example, the determinant of the trefoil is 3, the determinant of the figure 8 is 5. Um, 3 is not equal to 5, so the trefoil and the figure 8 are not equivalent. Um, However, it's not so nice because to work it out, you have to work out a determinant of a possibly quite large matrix. Uh, the relevant pages here are 18 to 21. So, let's begin. Here is my lesson on how to compute the determinant of a link L. And here are the steps on the left. So we're going to do one step at a time, and uh, I'll explain the steps as we go. So the first step is to choose a diagram of your link L that has no closed curves in it. So let me choose a let me choose a link L and a diagram of it. Uh, let's do this guy L four A one. I think it's called. Um, it's got four crossings, so we're going to end up computing a three by three determinant, which is probably not so bad. So here we go. That's L four A one. What did this no closed curves business mean? Um, it meant that you shouldn't have any uh, arcs containing no crossings at all. Um, there's a picture of that in the notes, so go and have a check in the notes. You can always get rid of a closed curve if there is one. So let's, let's not worry about this just now, but you should go and check it out yourselves. So that's step one. Choose a diagram with no closed curves. Step two. Label the arcs x0 up to xm and label the crossings 0 up to m. So here's the labeling of the arcs. Whoops. x0, x1, x2, x3. So m equals 3 here. And let's label the crossings. Uh, let's label them 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, do you notice something? There's as many arcs as there are crossings, right? We've labeled the arcs x0 up to x3 and the crossings 0 up to 3. That's a consequence of the fact that we had no closed curves. Um, and it follows from a lemma in the notes uh, that if there are no closed curves, then there's as many arcs as there are crossings. OK, so we've done step two. Let's go on to step three. Write the coloring equations in the form xi plus xj minus 2xk congruent to 0. So let's do that over here. And let's name the colouring equations this time. So we'll have 0, 1, 2, 3. And what is the colouring equation at crossing 0? Uh, it's x1 plus x3 minus 2x0. Congruent to 0. At 1, uh, it's x0 plus x2 minus 2x3 congruent to 0. At 2, it's x1 plus x3 minus 2x2 congruent to 0. And at 3, it's x0 plus x2 minus 2 x1 congruent to 0. Okay, so that was step number 3. Step number 4, write out the matrix A+. plus. What on earth is the matrix A+. plus? Well, let me draw you the skeleton of the matrix A+, plus, and then maybe you can start to guess. Uh, the skeleton of the matrix A+, plus looks like this. Uh, it's going to be a big square matrix, and it's going to have rows called 0, 1, 2, 3. And it's going to have columns called x0, x1, x2, x3. What goes in an entry of the matrix? What goes in the 2 row and the x3 column? Well, I look at colouring equation for the colour at the colouring equation for crossing number 2, I look at the coefficient of x3, that's plus 1. So in here I get a plus 1. 
what goes in row 2 under column x2, well, I go to colouring equation number 2, I look for the coefficient of x2, that's minus 2, so my entry there is minus 2. What goes in position uh, row 2, column x1, I go to colouring equation 2, I look for the coefficient of x1, that's 1, so here I get a 1. What goes in row 2, column x0, I go to the colouring equation for crossing number 2, and I look for the coefficient of x0. x0 doesn't appear, so it has co coefficient 0. Okay, do you see the rule? So, pause the video, try and fill in for yourself the rest of the matrix, and then I'll, I'll do it myself and we can double check. Okay, here we go. Uh, so for row 0, we see we have 1x1, 1x3, minus 2x0s, and no x2s. Uh, for, coloring, for, for crossing number 1, we have 1x0, 1x2, minus 2x3s, and no x1s. And for crossing number 3, we have 1x0, 1x2, minus 2x1s, and no x3s. So there we go, that was step number 4. Step number 5, delete a row and column to get A. Um, what I do is, I look at A+, plus. I choose any column and delete it, and I choose any row and delete it. So I'm going to choose, for argument's sake, the 0 row and the 0 column. And then I can write out exactly what is A. It's the thing I get after that. So A is equal to the matrix 0, 1, minus 2, 1, minus 2, 1, minus 2, 1, 0. I could have chosen any uh, other row to delete, and I could have chosen any other column to delete. It would have given the same outcome. Now here we are, the final step. Compute the determinant of L, which by definition is the absolute value of the determinant of A. So, det L, the absolute value of det A, which is the absolute value of, well now I remember how to compute the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix. I'm going to do it by working along the top row. So I get 0 times the determinant of uh, the matrix I get by deleting the row and column containing my 0. And that determinant is minus 2 times 0, minus 1 times 1. Uh, minus 1, I'm working along the top row. And I've gone from the, f from the 1, 1 entry to the 1, 2 entry, so I change sign. Minus 1 times the determinant I get uh, by deleting the row and column containing my 1. That's this matrix, 1 minus 2, 1, 0. And the determinant of that is 1 times 0, minus 1 times minus 2. And then finally, minus 2 times 1 times 1, minus, minus 2 times minus 2, And we're running out of space, so let's rearrange the page a bit. Let's get rid of m equals 3. Goodbye. Right. Uh, so what is this computation going to give us? It's going to give us uh, the absolute value of, well, 0 times anything is 0. Hurrah, we can ignore that. Minus 1 times uh, 2. Minus 2 times, uh, this is 1 minus 4, that's minus 3. And that's the absolute value of minus 2 plus 6, which is the absolute value of 4, which is 4. Okay, um, 
And so if the computation of the determinant at the very end was a bit fast, what you should do is revise determinants. There's lots of different ways to work them out, and they're all going to be useful to you in the course. Okay, so that's our lesson, how to compute determinants.